if this E. coli is a sort of workhorse in the, in the laboratory, one of the questions that scared and timorous people would have is that if George or any of you guys engineers an E. coli that is new to the world and it just slips out the window and goes, uh, I don't know, out of NYU into, into Washington Square Park, that it might meet another, e. Coli, I don't exactly know where E. coli get together, but, it, but because of bacteria, it would just kind of slip something from it into its wild neighbor, and the neighbor would either die immediately or create perhaps in some occasions an advantage which would maybe affect E. coli everywhere. So you, uh, I, I, I don't know whether you thought, okay, this is somewhere coming at us, or whether you were just worried about safety, but you began to think about this, and what did you do? Yeah, well, we worry quite a bit about safety. More than worry, we do in safety engineering, which there's almost every field of engineering has a safety component. Uh, and in this particular case, most organisms you deal with in the lab or even on the farm, if you put it out into the wild, wild, it will disappear. It will be eaten and die and not reproduce. Um, but we were making a particular one where there's an industrial problem with viruses contaminating your process. Even one viral particle can wipe out your factory for two years. Uh, so we wanted to make a virus-resistant E. coli to solve that problem. But oh, that so that's the opposite. So if the window is open in the lab, in comes a virus, it yeah. lands on one of your E. coli, and your entire lab goes down. But that creates a possible, possible new problem, which is that now it could live in the wild. It could outcompete all the other E. coli, which have hundreds of viruses that, to which they're sensitive. This would have zero viruses to which it's sensitive. And that oh, I see. So the, the mutant E. coli, having just gotten virus-resistant inside the lab, then lands on the, the hoodie of Tommy, yeah. who walks back into Washington Square Park, and off yeah. it goes and conquers all of Washington Square Park and beyond. Yeah, because E. coli is a global species. It, 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 go, it goes around the world quite quickly. Uh, we don't need to get into details of how no, it goes. No, that's not. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, so, so we wanted to make it so it, as soon as it left the lab, it would immediately start starving for something that's only found in the lab. In the past, people have made it so it would starve of something that might be in the wild, but we felt that that wasn't safe enough. So we wanted to make something that was only in the lab. So we made it addicted to or dependent upon a particular or not uh, laboratory-derived chemical uh, called BIP -A. It's BIP a. It's a large amino acid. It's a, larger than most, but larger than all the rest. But this is like this is like a gruel or a broth that it sits it's, in when it's, it's in. Just, a... It's part of. The, the broth you grow it in, right? Uh -huh. And it's, and it's an in, inexpensive, and it doesn't need very much of it, but it does need more than zero. So um, the standards, such as they were, were that you, you needed to have something that would not escape at sort of one in a million. But one in a million is, is basically escaping. Uh, so, so we've, this one we've clocked at about uh, one in, uh, 10 to the 16th, so it's about 10 orders of magnitude better, and it could be even better than that. 10 to 16 to zeros? Measure. I don't even know what the word for that is. Yeah, right. G gajillion. There you go, Gajillion. Brazilian. Yeah, so, 